In our last video, we were in the Faroe Islands where we installed our D400 wind generator. Since then, we've sailed over 1,200 nautical miles offshore from the Faroe Islands to the archipelago of Svalbard at 78 degrees north latitude. We've spent the past two and a half months sailing over 600 nautical miles throughout the many anchorages on the west coast of the main island of Spitsbergen. Now I'm ready to tell you how the D400 has been working for us and to show you how we wired up all of the components of the D400 down below. But first, if you haven't seen them already, check out our first two videos about the D400. We made an unboxing video and an on-deck installation video. There are links to those videos in the description below. I'm very pleased to say that we're extremely satisfied with the performance of the D400 wind generator. Over the past few months, we've used the D400 and our solar panels to power 100% of our electronics, including things like autopilot, radar, chart plotter, lights, refrigeration, personal computers, and a lot more. Whenever we've run our engine, it has always been for propulsion and never because we needed to charge our batteries using our engine's alternator. I'll show you the D400 generating electricity later in this video, but first I'd like to show you how we wired up some of the components of the D400 down below. Do you remember those 12 volt cables that we connected to the D400 in the installation video? I ran both of those cables to this box just above the dinette table and installed most of the components in there. I did this so that I could always see how many amps were flowing from the D400 at any time on these amp meters. These inexpensive amp meters aren't included with the D400 and they aren't necessary for the installation, but I thought they'd be great to have here. This amp meter shows the total number of amps that are flowing from the D400 at any time. This amp meter shows how many amps are flowing to a house bank that I have located in the salon. And this meter shows how many amps are flowing to a house bank that I have located in the dinette. The regulator with the D400 will only charge one of these banks at a time. And if both of the banks are fully charged, then it will divert excess energy to a dump resistor that I have located in the engine room, as we'll see in a moment. Finally, this is the braking switch. The braking switch lets you put the D400 into this braking mode where the blades of the D400 slow way, way down, even if it's very windy outside. This is so that you can turn the D400 out of the wind so that the blades stop entirely, and then you can go up and tie a string around them to secure them. It's very important to realize that the braking switch is just for slowing the blades down prior to securing it by hand with a string. You should never leave the braking switch engaged without securing the blades immediately afterwards, otherwise damage may occur. Okay, let's take a look under the hood. These are the 12 volt cables coming from the D400 the red positive cable and the black negative cable. The black negative cable goes to this power post where it then connects to the negative cable coming from the regulator and to the braking switch. More about that in a minute. The red positive cable goes to this 50 amp fuse and then continues on to the amp meter that shows you the total number of amps that are coming from the D400. From the amp meter, it goes to the braking switch where it continues on to the red cable coming from the regulator. If the braking switch is in the on position, then it connects the positive cable coming from the D400 to the negative cable coming from the D400, shorting out the D400. This is what causes the blades to spin very slowly. Again, the braking switch is not for stopping the D400 for any great length of time. It's just for slowing the blades down so that you can manually secure them by hand by tying a string around them. 
If the braking switch is in the off position, then the flow of electricity goes on to the regulator. From the regulator, there are these two red cables. Each of them goes to a 30 amp fuse. That's what these small boxes are. And then from there, they go on to the positive post on each of the house banks. If both of the house banks are fully charged, then the regulator sends the excess energy down this cable. This cable is connected to the dump resistor, which I have located in the engine room. Let's go take a look. Welcome to the engine room aboard Paragon. These are the dump resistors that are connected to that black cable coming out of the regulator. If both of the house banks are fully charged and the D400 blades are still spinning and generating electricity, then the regulator will divert excess energy to these dump resistors where it's dissipated as heat. Now, at first I wasn't too crazy about the idea of having something in the engine room that actually got hot, but I've been watching these really closely over the past few months and I have absolutely no worries about that now. At one point during our sail to Svalbard, we encountered some very strong northerly headwinds. And rather than battle those headwinds to make more progress towards the north, we decided to just heave to. We ended up being hove to for over 48 hours in winds sustained between 25 knots and 30 knots for the entire time. During that time, both of our house banks became completely charged and the regulator started sending all of the excess energy from the D400 that was spinning in 30 knot winds to this. I found the actual amount of heat generated by these to be surprisingly small. And I have absolutely no worries that there could possibly be any adverse effect from the small amount of heat that's generated by them. So that's how we wired up the D400 on Paragon. It was all pretty straightforward and I was able to figure it all out by reading the well-written instruction manual. I hope you've enjoyed this little look at the D400 aboard Paragon in the Arctic Circle. I'll leave you with this little look at the D400 actually generating energy. Please note that the wind speed shown on the wind speed instrument is taken from the top of Paragon's mast. This isn't necessarily the same amount of wind that's flowing over the D400 itself, but it gives you an idea of what's going on with the wind. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and let us know what you think in the comments below. Fair winds and happy sailing.